Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is hypersomnolence disorder? So hypersomnolence disorder is characterized by excessive sleepiness, even when the main sleep period has been at least seven hours. And we'd expect to see one of three symptoms for criterion A of hypersomnolence disorder in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, the DSM. The first symptom is recurrent periods of sleep or lapses into sleep. These are not sleep attacks like we might see with narcolepsy, but rather the movement into sleep is gradual. The second symptom is a main sleep period of nine hours or more. And with this main sleep period of nine hours or more, the individual still does not feel refreshed. So it's referred to as non-restorative sleep. The third symptom criterion is when an individual doesn't feel fully awake after being abruptly awakened. This is referred to as sleep inertia, and sometimes we hear it referred to as sleep drunkenness. One of these symptoms in criterion A needs to occur at least three times a week for three months in order to be eligible for the diagnosis of hypersomnolence disorder. Additionally, the hypersomnolence symptoms can't be better explained by another sleep disorder or medical condition or another condition like substance use. Another symptom criterion of hypersomnolence disorder is it leads to significant stress in one or more areas, like with career or school or socializing. There are also a number of specifiers with hypersomnolence disorder. There's nine, and they're in three different categories. So in the first category, it's with mental disorder, with medical condition, or with another sleep disorder. The next set of specifiers are acute, subacute, and persistent, and this is how long the disorder has been present. So with acute, it's less than one month. With subacute, it's one to three months. And with persistent, it's greater than three months. The last set of specifiers deals with the symptom of difficulty maintaining daytime alertness. And these are the severity specifiers. So if there's difficulty maintaining daytime alertness for one to two days a week, that's mild. Three to four days a week, it's moderate. And five to seven days a week, that's severe. So I wanna go back for a moment and briefly discuss the concepts of sleep inertia and the lapses into sleep. We see those in criterion A in the DSM for hypersomnolence disorder. Now sleep inertia affects between 36 and 50% of individuals who have hypersomnolence disorder. And remember, sleep inertia is when somebody is awakening and they have difficulty becoming fully awake. So there's a grogginess there. And this has a few different potential symptoms. We see a few different features associated with sleep inertia, including memory deficits, someone being disoriented, particularly to space and time, trouble with motor dexterity, so writing with a pen, for instance, might be difficult. We also see potentially inappropriate behavior and, of course, I mentioned grogginess. Now, sleep inertia can last anywhere from minutes to hours, so it can be a significant problem for individuals with hypersomnolence disorder to cope with. I mentioned earlier, too, these lapses in the sleep. And it's important to remember that these lapses are usually gradual, not the sleep attack type feature we see with narcolepsy, as I mentioned before. Also, these lapses are more likely to occur during periods of low stimulation or low activity. The prevalence of hypersomnolence disorder is about 1% of the population, and it is comorbid with depressive disorders and bipolar disorders. So one of the questions I hear sometimes about hypersomnolence disorder is how is it different than narcolepsy? Well, narcolepsy is a distinct mental health disorder. It's distinct from hypersomnolence disorder. And some of the symptoms we may see with hypersomnolence disorder that may be a little different than we would see with narcolepsy would be with hypersomnolence disorder, we would expect longer and less refreshing daytime sleep episodes. Also, during these daytime sleep episodes with hypersomnolence disorder, we would expect little or no dreaming to occur. We'd also expect longer and less refreshing nocturnal sleep. An individual with hypersomnolence disorder usually has a greater difficulty awakening 
than somebody with narcolepsy, and they have more persistent daytime sleepiness, usually, than we see with narcolepsy. I hope you found this description of hypersomnolence disorder to be interesting. Thanks for watching.